<laughs> All right, you know how you know, at Christmas you get shirts and sweaters and you gotta wear them at least once? Sermonade. <laughs> 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 church and then I went, this week is weird. <laughs> By the way, thank you all for uh, flexing and coming out early uh, with this game thing going on. I'm really torn because I don't know if I should pray that the Lord would help them win and then we have to maybe figure this out for next week too. Or pray that they lose so we can go back to our regular schedule. What should we do? <laughs> You're okay flexing for one more week if, if the Lord should lead? <laughs> okay, so um, I had one of those weird conversations this morning uh, with one of you that will go nameless. So Walt Pestum comes up. And he, and he said, you know, today is so much like the old hymns of the church. That's the kind of stuff he says to me, you know. And uh, he said, you know, John, don't, doesn't this day just remind you of the hymn, uh, Oh God, our strength in ages past. And I thought, no, but I'm going to go in the office and find a hymnal. <laughs> so here he is, okay. <clears throat> Sufficient is thine arm alone. And our defense is sure. <laughs> Just say it. <laughs> Sufficient is thy arm alone, and our defense is sure. <laughs> Thank you, Walt. <laughs> Always the teacher. <laughs> they didn't get that at first, did they? <laughs> that's not true. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so. Uh, Chris and I had a brilliant idea. Last, last, we don't get many, but we got one this week. So last Sunday was Jana's uh, farewell sermon, right? Because she came and shared. Um, and we went, what if we each do our farewell sermon? And see, what, what passage of scripture would we want to preach on if we had one more chance to do that? Now, it's a little complicated because, you know, I'm doing a couple of weeks and he's doing a couple of weeks. Don't worry, so there's the last couple of sermons, kind of the ultimate thing. And, and I immediately knew the passage that I would want to um, preach. And in fact, I would like to have uh, at least one of these verses on my uh, tombstone, should I have the tombstone. That's still undecided by Eileen. <laughs> Um, Philippians chapter 1 it's very, you've heard this many times I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus and then, these next couple of verses were the ones that uh, Sean and Monique told me were selected for the baby, for her baptism. So, this is my prayer. I think this is it. That your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. I don't know if all that will fit on my tombstone, mm -hmm. but I would like at least part of that. Now, I'll tell you why. Um, businesses in their management and their training and their staff development uh, often rely on consultants to come in and they do a little personality test to help them figure out you know, why they're getting along or they're not getting along or why they don't work well, help them understand each other. And uh, there was a test called the Myers-Briggs test. Um, you've heard of that? Oh, yeah. And you end up with four letters. Uh, you know, uh, I was an extrovert, so I was an E, and I was intuitive, so I was an N, and I was I cared about ideas more than people, so I was a T, thinking. And uh, and then I was a, a radical, almost off the chart P, which meant I have absolutely no ability to finish anything. Uh, I, I leave everything open. Everything's open ended. Everything is going to, and, uh, and we had a consultant come in 
a very uh, famous company that wrote lots of books like Death by Meetings, things like that, <laughs> um, The Five Failures of an Executive. So um, they came in uh, as a donation to work with our church in California. And I found out later, they wrote a book on silos, uh, power struggles, and territorialism. <laughs> based on our church, <laughs> but they had to conceal it. So the, the main character in it was a jovial priest uh, at St. John's Catholic Church in Walnut Creek. <laughs> Why that hit it? But uh, anyway, so they came in and gave us all these tests and everything, and we found out that I was completely different from every staff member. Everyone had their different things, but they got down to the end, and they were the opposite of me. They were the, I think it was Jay. They uh, had closure skills, finish things, do it, accomplish it, and they were great at it. And I had none of that. And they looked at me like, we can help you, John. We can train you to get things done. You'll be really good if you ever learn to finish anything. Uh, and then I discovered this verse. And I believe this is God's blessing for people who just can't finish it. <clears throat> I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of our partnership in the gospel from the first day till now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. And I suddenly went, wait a minute. You don't have to teach me how to get stuff done. Because when it comes to what's most important, that's up to the Lord. He began a good work, and he'll bring it to completion. And I sat back, and they were frustrated. But... That's about it. <laughs> There's lots of verses about getting up early and getting stuff done, but this wasn't one. So I claim this verse um, because it reminds me, first of all, that there's a God, and second of all, it is not me. There's two things that are really important to know. Uh, because um, and it also reminded me that what God begins in us, the seeds he plants in our mind and our heart are good. And a lot of times we forget that. Um, I mean, I'm someone, you know, who focuses on all the negativity, and I, I, I'm good at it. Uh, I can see problems where there aren't any problems that I can find them and uh, become discouraged from them. And... Um, and I forget that what God begins is good. And he's building on that. And I don't have to uh, seek out or assume that uh, it's bad. You know, I used to have that thing of, uh, I'm afraid to do God's will because if it's something I want to do, it's probably not God's will. If I find it enjoyable and fun and exciting and challenging, that's not God's will. He wants me to do the really hard, boring, depressing thing that I'm not gifted at. Why did I get that idea? Well, I went to Sunday school. <laughs> that's where I got it. But the, the idea of I feel guilty if I'm having a blast because well, God must not want that. Why not? He planted a seed in us that's good. And so why wouldn't we be excited and enjoying and having fun in doing his will? Somehow I got that all backwards. Um, I'm not a person who's confident all the time. I, uh, I get bursts of it, usually at inappropriate times, but um, confidence never was one. I, I'm sort of a a uh, poster child for radical adult insecurity. Um, but but I love that Paul, in writing uh, to the church in the old town of Philippi, begins by saying, Here's, this is one thing I'm confident about. I have confidence. And it's not Julie Andrews and Sound of Music going, I have confidence in confidence alone. That's stupid. 
<laughs> Why would you do that? That's like saying, I have faith in faith. You know, it's like, so? Uh, I'm sure there are people in a town somewhere freezing right now who have faith in the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Just say it. But, um, but the fact that we can have confidence not in ourselves, and not in what we've done, and not what we're achieving, and not what we're working on, and not what we're trying to finish, and not what we're hoping might happen, but we have confidence that he who began a good work in you is going to bring it to completion. He's not done with us. He's not finished with us. He's not tired of us. And we dare not quit before God. It's so easy to want to give up before God gives up. That means we've got bad time. We need to trust that he's not finished with us. And uh, sometimes it has to do with our, you know, I mean, we can pray for our kids and hope that uh, hope that God's not done with them. And then we find out that he's still not done with us either. And we've got some ways to go to and all these different situations. Now this, uh, this town of uh, Philippi was an interesting place because um, uh, you notice we have these new lights going in up here? Uh, in February, we have three weekends of uh, Shakespeare here, um, Macbeth, the um, uh, recycled Shakespeare company, <laughs> starring Richard Murdy. <laughs> he's in it, he's in it, and uh, I, I'm not even going to ask whether you have to wear tights or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm just be letting you know. So we're putting in the lights that we've had for five years, but we've never hooked them up, and uh, and uh, we're gonna have that. So Shakespeare, though, is the one who talks to us about Philippi, because uh, remember in, uh, uh, Brutus and Cassius murder Julius Caesar, right? And then they go, and uh, Mark Anthony defeats them in Philippi. Which is interesting because Philippi was a Roman uh, garrison, it was a, a military base. And not a big town, but it had a highway going right through it, and it had hills uh, up above the, the town, very much like Seattle, basically. But, uh, hills around the town, uh, we have a military base on Bremerton, but, uh, and a big, ugly freeway coming right up the middle of the town that you never can drive on. But that's basically Philippi. And they were known, like Seattle, for being a place of um, openness and flexibility regarding uh, spirituality. So they had the Greek gods to worship, and then they also had the Roman version of those gods to worship, if you, if you prefer that. And then they were famous because they also brought in, they imported from Ethiopia, some Ethiopian uh, uh, fertility gods that they brought in. And, uh, and it was into this community, very Seattle-like, really, um, that Paul came and uh, began to share about Jesus and planted this little church. And now he's writing to them a few years later from prison in Rome. Uh, and um, you can tell from his letter, if you were to read it, what their issues were. Spiritual pride, um, divisiveness, anxiety, fear. And he's addressing, encouraging them, he's uh, reminding them, he's correcting them, and, and all that goes on in the spiritual letter. But the first thing he says is, I am so grateful for you, for all of you. Um, I thank God every time I think of you. Isn't it great to have somebody say that to you? I thank God every time I think of you. And, and then he calls them to, um, to celebrate and enjoy their partnership and ministry. Um, I, I, I really love that because it rings true for our experience here at Harvard Church. This idea of we're partners in ministry. Um, we don't know where God's taking us. We don't know what shape it's going to be. Uh, sometimes we feel like we got jeans and a t-shirt and a bag over our head. It doesn't matter. Um, 
and somehow we're in this together. Now, I, I th I've told you before about that when I was a new pastor right out of seminary, and I, I knew everything, and I was smart, I had fast answers, but I, uh, we were at uh, Solana Beach Presbyterian Church, about a thousand people in worship, and I got up to preach, I was so nervous, but I really worked on the sermon, had a manuscript to read, and uh, all of this, and I couldn't find the Bible verse. And it was like, uh, scripture today is, you know, and, you know, I do it subtly, you know, so they don't really know, but after a while, they do. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I can't even find the table of contents, and there's the maps, and, and it's like, I couldn't remember if Matthew was in the Old Testament or the New Testament. And, and finally, in embarrassment and humiliation and desperation, I said, okay, you guys, we're all in this together. Somebody give me a page number. <laughs> and there's some rustling around the priest. And went, 535. You know, Thank you. Let's go. <laughs> and we got there. And I thought, well, that was great. Okay. It's a best of all experience. You know, someday I'll mention the sermon. Yeah. Okay. And uh, that's so stupid. But anyway, I got I went to my office after the service. And there was one of the elders. And he looked so distraught. His face looked red. And he, and he was like, Fuming, and I thought, oh my gosh, this guy has a terrible personal problem. He better come in and I'll pray with him and I'll encourage him, maybe counsel him, you know, with my wisdom. And he came in, asked him to sit down, he said, no. And then he went, Pastor, you have ruined church. You have ruined church, you have ruined worship for all of us. We may never get over this. How? You're, we brought you here. You're supposed to be prepared. You're supposed to be ready. You're supposed to be knowledgeable. You can't find a verse in the Bible. And then you say, we're all in this together. <laughs> oh. And he stormed out. That was one of those times when I thought, I should feel worse than I do. <laughs> I always pray with joy because, because I have it together and I know more than you. And you don't know much, but I can teach you. No, that's not what it says. Right? I always pray with joy because how else can I face the day with all of these problems that you people bring? No, that's not what it says. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel. That's why the joy is there. Because we're all in this together. That took a long time for me to figure that out. But isn't that the truth? We need each other. We belong together. We care for each other. We're going to learn to, to, to love each other and to serve together and to reach out together and to uh, welcome new people together. And, um, and God's not finished with us. We never arrived. I know there's sometimes temptations where you go, you know, I've come far enough. I think I don't need to grow anymore. You know. I, I think I've done enough serving. I don't need to serve anymore. You know, it's really interesting that we, we uh, Baptize uh, sweetest little baby. I hope you saw her, you know, Miss mm -hmm. Bella. And um, I remember one church I was in, we had a congregational meeting and we were struggling because we didn't have enough people to um, do Sunday school. Which was funny because we had like 600 kids in the Sunday school every week. And so we had a lot of people working at it, but not enough. And, and one lady stood up, one time member, and said, I did my time in Sunday school when I was younger. It's time for somebody else to care for these kids. And sat down and didn't know that that was one of the most horrible things a person could say. Had no idea. She thought she was making the statement. I've done my time. Like it's prison to love <laughs> kids. <laughs> you know, if Isabella runs up to you and, and, and wants you to hold her, don't say, I've done my time. <laughs> Let somebody else love you. No, oh, no, no. We have a partnership, a ministry together, and God is not done with us because He's begun something good, and He's going to carry it to completion. Amen. Now, 
yesterday was a wonderful morning. Uh, new members orientation, and we talked about where we're going, vision for the church, and all those things. Of course, they were hoping that I would share the three-year plan, the five-year plan, the ten-year plan, which that doesn't exist. So um, <laughs> instead, I told them what really matters here, and what, what I'm going to be praying for every day that, that God lets us be together, and that's that we would learn to be vulnerable, we'd be committed to that, that we'd share, we'd be real. So when people come in and visit, they may walk out, and they'll say, wow, that church was real. Those people weren't hiding. Uh, may not even like what they shared, but it didn't matter because they were real. And, I, and that could be the mark of our church. And, and the accountability, that we matter to each other. And we're going through stuff, we care, and we, and we, we want to be a part of that. And that they'll care about us through it all. And, and commitment that we would go through this uh, ups and downs and twists and turns and misunderstand all those things. We would do that together and see where God is taking us along the way. So that's my three year, five year, and ten year vision. Okay, that's it right there. It has nothing to do with anything else. Um, and I think it would be so fun if we continued being that way and not leave that behind and settle for something less. But I think God's planted that seed among us. Uh, every time, we, well, I mean, yesterday, yesterday morning in the meeting, we took some time and, and each person went around and shared some of their story, their journey of faith and what God's brought them through. And there were tears and there were laughter. And, were and I thought I knew them. And then I hear the stories and I go, I didn't know anything about these people what they're going through and all those things. And, and the idea that uh, we can we can share our stories, good and bad, and it's a gift that we give. It's a great gift. And we and we honor that and we, and we pray for each other with more love because we know each other better. And our love grows in knowledge. So, If I were to die tonight and didn't want to feel like I, I wait, wait, I got Lord, send me back. I got another message. Wait, I forgot to say this. Would it be all right to say I thank God every time I think of you because of our partnership in the gospel, and I'm confident that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. Would that be all right? Okay, then that's what it is. I'm not planning on dying tonight. And I have to find another one for next week, but you know, that's all right.